Dr. Stomach Worm here. Uh, last night I had an opportunity to go to WKIT's Hot Stove Night, which involves a bunch of managers from the Boston Red Sox sitting around talking baseball for a while. Eh, not really into baseball. Found it pretty boring myself, but the thing that I wanted to go for was because comedian Bob Marley did a set. And since people were complaining yesterday about this guy, Ian, and how he wasn't so funny, I figured I'd share some of Bob Marley's set with you. So, I hope you dinks enjoy it. On uh, T uh, Todd Gatner on uh, Channel 6. Anybody ever watch him, ma'am? You ever watch Todd Gatner <laughs> on Channel 6? Yeah, it's pretty good, right? Yeah, And I heed his word now. Remember remember October 30th with, with the little windstorm we had? Remember? Anybody take that for granted at all? Yeah, I was sitting in the bed with the bride, you know, in the evening, we're watching it, he comes on with his shock and awe, you know. <laughs> Gale Force Webb's kicking up, gonna be hurricane, my wife goes, whatever, Bob, whatever, that's not gonna happen, put it on Shock Tank, let's go. <laughs> 3 a.m., a bird's tree comes through the living room. <laughs> that's not gonna happen, it seems to be developing pretty quickly. <laughs> I'm down there with a chainsaw and my flip-flops and a pair of underwears at 3 a.m. cutting up a birch in the living room. <laughs> She's yelling at me, Bob, Bob. I'm like, watch, because you got to put some clothes on. Clothes? You worried about my outfit? <laughs> There's a tree in the living room right now. <laughs> I could be on the Titanic sinking, and, and my wife would go, are you going to wear that, Bob? <laughs> So I call, the power. first of all, I love it when we lose power anywhere in Maine. This is everybody in the house when the power goes out. Did the power go out? <laughs> no, all the light bulbs burned out at the same time. <laughs> go up on the second floor, see if we got any power up there. Oh yeah, that second floor is zooming with power. That's, that's on a whole different grid, that second floor. <laughs> I call Central Maine Power, they're not answering, but... <laughs> It would have been great if the guy just answered, like, what, are you, are you serious, loser? It's going to be like a month. Get in line. No, they had the outgoing message, we are currently overwhelmed. Please leave a message. I left a message. Yeah, I'm overwhelmed, too, trying to go to the bathroom in the dark. You want to get it up and running? I don't want to start guessing over here. I don't want to drop the deuce in the hamper. Let's go. I should have listened to my Uncle Keith, because he knew it was coming, because he has the almanac, the farmer's almanac, because he doesn't have Wi-Fi, I guess, so there's still some people going off the almanac, you know who you are. Right, he called me like two days before, Bob, oh, my dog's been under the table licking himself for two days. Storms are brewing. <laughs> I've got to be honest with you, I don't know why we live here. <laughs> this is not a good place to live. I mean, if you've never been out of Maine, then you don't. And some of you look at me and go, what do you mean it's fine, Bob? It ain't fine. <laughs> They're all over the place. And every time I go someplace, I was in Florida last Sunday, 85 degrees. I'm like, oh my God, this is pretty awesome. Why don't I live here? And I don't, because I'm here, and I just keep going. And the older you get, you start making deals. Well, you know, when I, well, when I get to uh, be 65, uh, we'll probably get out of Maine. Like it's like you're being paroled from prison. <laughs> yeah, you know, when I'm 65 and I've got limited mobility and any chance of living to 66, <laughs> that's why I moved to Florida. This, this is what people say that live here. This is what we say. This is how we pacify ourselves. It's not bad up here. I love it. It's pretty good. You know, except for uh, December, January, February, March, April, <laughs> part of May. <laughs> half the year really sucks. <laughs> Jeez, you know, half my life has been horrible now that I think of it. <laughs> half my life has been spent looking out the window going, oh, this crap. <laughs> I drove up tonight and there was black ice, so be careful out there. Watch it out. What? I drove two, uh, two nights ago during the storm and I'm driving, mind my own business. So I saw the sign blinking on the highway, 45, ice and snow, stay slow, saves life. It scrolls, you know, like we have time to read all that. <laughs> My favorite is when they tell you when the exits are going to be closed in Maine for construction. Don't forget June 23rd. 
between 8 and 9 a.m., exit 48 will be closed. Oh, my God. Somebody get my day planner from the back seat. Hey, what are you doing on the 23rd? Well, I'll tell you what I'm not doing. <laughs> Getting off exit 48. So I'm pat patting along in my four-wheel drive pickup truck. I look over. There's a guy in a 93 Corolla passing me 78 miles an hour. If you're from Maine, the first thing you do is speed up a little bit. Because you're like, I'm not letting him take me. Everybody in the vehicle starts yelling at you, what are you doing? I'm in, I'm the leader. He ain't taking me. The car's swerving. Then as he's passing you, you always alert everybody in the car. Look at this idiot. <laughs> Second thing is you want to know where he's going. Where's he going anyway? You start judging him by his vehicle. 93 Corolla. I mean, what kind of rush could he be in? He's not on call at the hospital. He probably left something on at the meth lab. That's what I'm guessing. <laughs> And the last thing you say, and this is horrible, but everybody in this room has said it at one point, I hope he ends up in a ditch. <laughs> you, you what? I hope he ends up in a ditch. Would you stop? I'd never stop. I'd drive right by him. Ah! Might get out and spit on him. <laughs> I drive a lot for this. I get tired. You ever get tired when you drive? You ever have that? You ever have that feeling? Your eyes are wide open, but you have the feeling that you, you, the whole car is moving and you, you go, oh, oh. it just starts swerving like that. You know, like, oh my God, I almost killed myself. Probably ought to keep going, I guess. <laughs> I was driving home from Providence, Rhode Island two weeks ago. I had that feeling. I'm like, oh my God. I did it like four times. I got to New Hampshire. I finally pulled into the rest area and I'm sleeping. But as I'm sleeping, I had the same feeling. So I went, ah! and I hit the brake like five times. I thought I hit a vending machine or whatever. I didn't know this. If you are in a rest area and you're tapping your brake pedals, it means you might like some company. <laughs> I'm here to tell you two things. First of all, to each his own, I don't care. Secondly, it does work. <laughs> I was in the car like bees to honey. <laughs> Swarming hard. <laughs> in and, I, and I was like yelling through the window, no, I, I, I thought I was killing myself. <laughs> you know who shouldn't be driving anymore is my mother. Oh boy. Oh boy. She used to be five foot four. Now she's four six. <laughs> you know how people get older, they just start shrinking. You know what I mean? She looks like question mark. We had an Easter egg hunt. She was she was killing it. She wasn't even bending over. She was... <laughs> when she drives out, I'm not kidding you. Like she she's like, I don't know. We got her a car, right? Me and my sister got her a car. She's like, I don't like this car. It's got a blind spot. Yeah, that's called the back of the seat, man. <laughs> when you fall asleep. <laughs> she sits this close to the steering wheel. I'm not kidding you. Like right about here. If that airbag goes out, they're taking her head off. Her head's going to go through the back window like a 65-yard Gostowski field goal. When she gets in the vehicle, I want to set an alarm off like that nuclear... Everybody stay in your houses! She's doing all right, though. Last, last 10 months, my mother has broken both her hips and her back. So I don't know if she's the cage fighting. Or I don't know what's going on. <laughs> But she's on the walker now. She's got the walker. She's got that thing going. Where she's got it, you know, stepping out. She's got the tennis balls on the bottom of it. <laughs> Little question. Can't we do better than the tennis balls on the walker? <laughs> it's been like that yeah, my whole life, I think. You know, we got people in outer space. We got Wi-Fi. You can't do a little better than the tennis balls on the walker. <laughs> she calls me the other day. Can you stop at Walmart and get me four cans of tennis balls? Yup, sure enough, Billy Jean. What are you playing doubles? <laughs> Went over to get her for supper. She comes out, sees the whole family. Now it's Academy Award time with her walk out. I rolled the window down. I said, Mom, I'm coming out to help you. First of all, let me tell you something. I call my mother's house the Irish Catholic 
guilt distribution center. <laughs> right? I said, Mom, I'm coming out there. Stay in the car. I don't need you. I didn't need you yesterday. I'm not going to need you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, hey, what up? 45 minutes later, my 10 year old's like, Dad, seriously, can we just leave her in the driveway? I get out to help her. I go, Ma, I got you around the waist. That's not my waist because I don't wear a bra anymore. So. <laughs> Good, I'm in the driveway juggling my mother's chichis over here. I thought it was weird, you got three belly buttons, ma. You got an innie and two outies. I think that went over the kids' heads. And if it didn't, then you're not a very good parent, that's all I'm saying. When my sister comes out of the house, my sister lives with my mother. And my sister's 51 years old, so that'll give you the full scope of choices that my sister's made in her life. <laughs> Tough Irish girl, doesn't mind a few starters in the morning. Always has that look like, really? Really? You want me to slap the stupid off of you? <laughs> this is what she always says to me, Bobby, do you know why I live with Ma? You got any idea at all? I, I keep an eye on Ma, do you understand? Well, you're out every night doing your fart jokes, <laughs> hanging out with Lionel Richie. I'm keeping an eye on Ma. I'm like, well, you are doing a bang-up job. She's broken every bone in her body. I'm keeping an eye on her. What, are you watching her roll down the stairs? Like evil Knievel over here. She had a health scare last month. My sister calls me out. Bobby, it's Breast Awareness Month. I go, that's technically Breast Cancer Awareness. No, it's not. It's Breast Awareness Month. I'm like, well, I'm not going to argue with you, but that'd be a weird promo if you were just aware of your breast in October. Well, that's not why I'm calling you. The other day I was in the shower. Okay, well, I'm going to jump off the call now. I'm your brother. This is not Fort Kent, so I'm not interested. <laughs> you having fun, Bobby, with your Skittles and your Riddles? That's what she says to me. Your Skittles and your Riddles? Because I think I found a lump. I'm like, oh, that's not good. That's bad. I'm sorry. All right, what's the plan? I'm going to the doctor. On Wednesday, I go, call me right when you get out. I want to know, right? She calls me Wednesday. I go, what happened? I'm not telling you, Bobby. I go, tell me what happened. I'm not telling you, Bobby, because <laughs> you're going to put it in your skit. <laughs> I will not put it in my skit. But I am putting it in my skit. <laughs> if it was serious, I would not share with you. But it wasn't. It was awesome. Oh, my God. Perfect. I go, what happened? I went in there, I took my bra off, and a dog treat fell out. Okay. So there was no illness? You, you had like a sausage down there? First of all, you called me Monday. You're not showering before Wednesday? I do shower probably, but I got big boobs and sausages are sticky. I must have got up under there somehow. The dogs were sniffing my boobs all week long. I thought it was because they can smell illness. You know how dogs can smell illness? One had me by the sweater. Whoa! 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 Listen, people. I'm not up here because everything's okay. Do you understand? Normal people don't end up up here. You have to come from a weird situation to end up up here. My dad used to keep track of the family a little bit better, but he's gone. He's been gone now 13 years, so he didn't, he didn't die, he just he left. <laughs> no, he died. He did. He's wicked dead, yeah. It's okay, he would have laughed at that. <laughs> Even the day before he died, up in Maine Medic, to make him laugh like time it just right, wait for the nurse to walk by and lean over. I'm going to ask you one more time, Dad. Where's the money? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a pretty good dad. My son, I brought him to see uh, Stephen King's movie, It. I don't know if you've seen that or not, but I brought a bunch of 13-year-olds to see it. I've never been that frightened by a pronoun, let me tell you that much. It scared the corn right out of me. There's a clown in the sewer. That's not necessary. He comes up the street level. Did you see the movie? Have you seen that? The clown comes up the street level, man, and, he, and he, there's a little boy running down the street looking for a paper pirate hat or something. And the clown goes, come here, Georgie. And the kid goes, yeah, okay. <laughs> My 13 year old's like, why is he doing that, Dad? Dad, why is the kid going over there? Because if he doesn't, we don't have a movie. <laughs> if he calls the cops, they shoot the clown, the movie's over. 
The whole movie wouldn't shut up. Dad, this clown, clowns don't hurt people. Would a clown kill somebody? Well, no, well, uh, John Wayne Gacy did a pretty good job. Who's John Wayne Gacy, Dad? Never mind, I'll save it for bedtime. I did too, I was talking to a man. He goes, who's John Wayne Gacy? I go, he's a professional clown, and in his spare time, he killed 50 people. So, sleep tight. <laughs> We go, to bed. <laughs> we go to bed 2 30 that morning. He comes in. My kid's 5'11. He's 13. 5'11, 145 pounds, black belt, and karate. Right? Comes in. He goes, Can I sleep with you guys? <laughs> no, you can't, Chuck Norris. <laughs> no, go back to your room. He's under your bed. What? <laughs> I said, Go back to your room and go to bed. That's no way to say that! <laughs> Kids are better. You kids, how old are you, little fella? Right here. You're 11. You kids are better people than we were. You know that? You're smarter. You're better athletes. You're just better. You, you know, they're generally better at everything except like getting a job and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter's 16 now. She went to Guatemala this summer. She comes in, she goes, Dad, I'm going to Guatemala this summer. I'm like, well, why wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, you're 16 and everything, huh? Well, my biggest trip out of the state of Maine was Portsmouth when I was 20 years old. And I thought I was going to Paris. I'm like, oh my God, Portsmouth. I wonder what the language is down there. I wonder what to wear. It's going to be great. I go, what are you going to be doing? And she goes, I already talked to mom about it, Dad. We got it all worked out. Because they don't consult me on anything. Ladies, looky, looky, listen, listen. If you were married to me, would you consult me on anything? <laughs> They don't consult me, they come to me after, and they usually talk a little louder. Bob, here's what we're doing. Are you listening? I'm like, okay, I got it. I go, what are you going to be doing down there? I'm building houses, Dad, and I'm going to work on the water quality, and I'm going to help people with English. I'm like, oh, my God, Mother Teresa. You weren't doing that when you were 16, Dad? Oh, my God, yeah, we, were, we always were involved with the community. <laughs> I couldn't tell her the truth. Oh yeah, me and Uncle Mike, we were out in the uh, Burger King parking lot lighting our thoughts on fire every Saturday night. <laughs> I pound about six beers, pile grab a couple of whoppers, get a big lighter out and crank it up. <laughs> <laughs> They've been traveling and everything. They go all over. We went to Costa Rica in April. Anybody been to If you haven't been to Costa Rica, there ain't no need to go. I went for us, and I vetted it, and there ain't no need to go. It's fine right here, all right? The more places I go, the more I really do want to stay here. I know I was making fun at the beginning, but the really, the more I go out of here, the more I want to stay here. We left our house here in April to go to Costa Rica, 14 degrees. We get to Costa Rica, 114 degrees, which is a great change for anybody from Maine whose body hasn't seen sunlight for six and a half months. I got to the airport, I was like, we go to the car rental place. My daughter speaks Spanish like fluently. She's like, hello, 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 hello. The guy goes, I go, what did you say? What did you say? She goes, Dad, shut up. Oh my God. And the guy goes, hey, I know what that means. <laughs> we get in the car that we rented. We, we got a van, no air conditioning. And I go, Sorry, it was only about 18 minutes of his set. He did about 40, but I ran out of room on my phone at the time. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed what I was able to capture for you. Have a good one, fuckers. Snowy as fuck here. Peace.